and welcome to the X-22 Report. My name is Dave, and this is episode 238, and today's date is December 13th, 2013, and the title of this episode is, Iran Makes a Move to Replace the U.S. Military Presence in the Middle East. And we understand what is happening here. The central bankers, along with the U.S., are trying to make a deal with Iran. Of course, they have the illusion out there that it's all about the nuclear program. But behind the scenes, we understand the main motive of the U.S. and the central bankers. They want to get inside the country to sell the natural resources using the U.S. dollar. And if we just look at that, we can see past the nuclear illusion and see what's going on here. Now, yesterday, I reported that the sanctions and they're going to fine those oil companies or any other business that does business with Iran at this point because the central bankers do not want Iran to sell their natural resources with these companies uh, because they will be losing a lot of money and this is the purpose and this is the reason they place these sanctions uh, in place right now now this has nothing to do with nuclear right now it has everything to do with the central bankers using the US dollar to pay for the natural resources inside Iran to other countries who are buying their natural resources and this is the problem right now now the question is has we understand the nat the revolutionary guard has seen what the western powers are doing and gave a warning to rohini is rohini looking at it and saying oh just a minute here um, i can see what's going on or did the central bankers us government kind of set up iran to say hey listen they are not going along with this deal they just backed out and we were doing everything in our power and then eventually what will happen is there will be some type of false flag event because the only alternative they'll have is to strike Iran and they'll make the case that they didn't want us to go in and inspect their nuclear weapons and they're hiding something and we need to take action now and then all of a sudden we'll have a false flag event here in the United States and then all bets are off and we understand this that the president the Obama administration said to Congress listen we have these peace talks if you implement new sanctions the alternative is a military strike and this is what we're seeing right now but let's get into the economic collapse news and then we'll work our way down and discuss what is happening with Iran and what they would like to do in the Middle East area now out in Spain and we understand that in Spain France, Portugal, Cyprus, Greece, all the Eurozone nations are having major, major, major problems with debt, high unemployment. It is escalating. They can't stop it. And they are trying to do everything and everything to make things better. But everything, if you listen to the central bankers, what, what happens is the governments, the debt, the unemployment just gets a lot worse and the people get poor and poor and we see this happening and right now Spain right now um, their public debt has risen to a new record high of 93.4 percent Spain's debt ratio has soared from 40 percent of GDP in 2008 and um, to 85.9 percent at the end of 2012 so it kind of doubled and uh, the international the International Monetary Fund has warned that Spain would, fight, would face five more years with jobless rate of over 25%. And we have to remember that Spain is now going after the Social Security reserves to make up the deficit, and um, they're looking for revenue anywhere they can. And um, the Europe's main human rights watchdog has warned that Spain's austerity program could have a devastating impact on children as cuts have increased child poverty, malnutrition, and inadequate housing. And we are seeing this happen in Cyprus. We are seeing this happen in Greece. We're seeing it happen in France. We are seeing it happen every single place. We're even seeing it in the U.S. We had reports that New York, there are like a million or so homeless children right now because of Obamacare. Uh, about, what is it, five to six million people are without health insurance at this time because they were canceled. We are seeing the same exact thing. We have high unemployment. So all of this 
is not good for any nation and the United States right now is continually printing creating money faster the pace is getting faster and faster it is escalating and they cannot slow this down because if they slow this down the entire private Western Central Bank world which is the Eurozone Australia Canada UK United States completely implodes on itself and that is it so when you hear taper they are not going to taper because they realize what's going to happen when they taper because they are the market they are the ones who are controlling unemployment the manipulated numbers GDP the manipulated numbers inflation the, manip the, the manipulated numbers they are pumping in 85 billion which to other sources it is a lot more it's around 125 billion every single month to buy the Treasury bonds from other countries that are rejecting the Treasury bonds for, and those countries that are selling the Treasury bonds and the only buyer is the Fed so the Fed is creating the money letting the the United States government borrow the money the United States government is creating these Treasury bonds and the Fed is taking these Treasury bonds back and it's just a complete, you know, Ponzi scheme circle here. And um, it just cannot be sustained at this time. Now, Ireland is looking to exit uh, the bailout from the EU. And um, there are some reports that are saying that this is very misleading because the banks in Ireland are sitting on a stockpile of unreported or unrecognized debt and uh, they've been hiding this in the banks and eventually what they're going to do is turn inward and look at the depositors and creditors and do a bail-in so what they're doing is some tricky accounting saying that we are you know we're coming out of uh, the uh, the debt that we have with the EU and they're coming out of the bailouts and this report is saying that the banks are hiding vast amount of unreported um, debt in the banks and eventually it will come out that they're going to go into a bail-in mode and we know this is going to happen because the Eurozone with their document has been set up and they are ready to go tomorrow the United States have the F has the FDIC Bank of England document they are ready to go for a bail-in. Canada has a bail-in document. Switzerland has a bail-in document. Australia has a bail-in document. And guess what? They are ready to go. Uh, because what they understand is they understand that this entire model cannot be sustained. And unless they get some type of war going, and we have to understand, what does this war do? Well, it it allows the countries to borrow more money because there's a war going on it allows them to cancel debt like if there's a war with China and Russia they can cancel the uh, the um, Treasury bond debt that we have the United States has with these countries and these central bankers what they do is they profit off of either side of of the war here and off of all the countries because they profit during the war and all eyes are off of the collapse that is happening within the country this collapse is still happening as the war is getting started but your mind and everything is readjusted to someplace else so you don't see the collapse and they can say listen we're in a wartime right now everyone has to sacrifice everyone has to give up a lot because we are in war because they collapsed our economy and we need to do what we need to do and this is what war does and we can see how they are pushing this and trying to get something started and they need this to get started because they need to have your eyes looking someplace else for the blame and the blame will be on Iran Syria Russia China North Korea any of these other countries now here in the US the consumer consumerism is starting to slow down people are slowing down their purchases they're not purchasing as much as they've done in the past and we're hitting a peak right now and it's starting to decrease and what we're seeing on a 12 month average um, annual percentage um, retail sales even though you know they report that during the holiday season you know we're up whatever it is 0.6 percent 
if you look the overall at the overall trend the retail sales starting this year has decreased from 7% down to 4%. Now we have to remember back in the crisis of 2008 2009 when it really hit um, retail sales dropped to negative 10% and it was pumped all the way back up to about 7% and now we are in a decline from 7% down to 4%. And if you look at the graph, you want to come to the x22report.com site. The graph is on here. Just click on the title of this report and scroll down a little bit and you can see the graph. We are in a decline in retail sales. And what else we're seeing here is that the U.S. economic growth gauge is, slips in the latest weeks. And a the uh, weekly index fell from 134, 131.4 in the week ended December 6th from a revised 132.7. So the economic growth gauge is declining also. Now we understand that the, uh, the government has come out with a budget plan and Ben Swan was reporting on the budget plan and, and he goes on to say that um, this is what the budget is it's to they're going to reduce the federal deficit by 23 billion dollars over the next 10 years without raising any taxes sounds pretty good doesn't it the plan okay uh, the plan calls for raising fees but then we have to look at at what, what, what do they mean by raising fees? Well, the plan reportedly calls for increases in higher airline fees, which, if that is the case, is a tax. And that is just one of the fees. There are many, many other fees. Part of the plan is to reduce uh, the $23 billion in spending over 10 years, is to first do away with those pesky automatic sequester cuts to the tune of $65 billion. And what they're going to do is they're going to reduce all of this by using um, taxpayer fees. So really, they're taxes, and they're just changing the name of what they're doing here. Now they're calling them fees, and they're really taxpayer uh, uh, taxes, and that's what they are. And ultimately, it will cut $23 billion in spending over the next 10 years, which is really nothing. Um, but it will do so by increasing spending by $65 billion right now. So let's say they're going to spend $65 billion right now, and over the next 10 years, it's going to be $23 billion they're going to cut, and that comes out to be about $2.3 billion each year that they're cutting. But if we look at the amount that they're borrowing, they are borrowing a trillion dollars every single year year so with this it does absolutely nothing it's almost like saying okay here I'm in a household right now and my monthly bills come out to I don't know four or five thousand dollars and we're gonna cut this you know because it's it's, it's a little too high by ten bucks every single month um, for uh, uh, ten dollars every single year for the next ten years huh. it doesn't do anything they're they're putting on a trill they're borrowing a trillion dollars a year. Now there is a report that Congress is preparing to move for impeachment of Obama. And I've been hearing this a lot, and right now the South Carolina Congressman Tom Rice has filed a congressional resolution which would, if adopted, direct the body to bring a civil action for an injunctive relief to challenge certain policies and actions taken by the executive branch. President Obama has refused to uphold laws as written and passed by Congress. Most notably, the president has changed and rewritten, at will, his landmark legislative achievement, the Patient Protective and Affordable Care Act, which is Obamacare. The president's actions are unconstitutional, pursuant to Article 1, Section 1, and Article 2, Section 3 of the Constitution. Once something is law nobody can just willy-nilly change it and the president went ahead and did that and what did he do he said okay I will put off the business penalties um, 
and their requirements until 2015. It didn't go to Congress. There was no vote. He just did it. So there are a lot of uh, um, congressmen uh, and congresswomen signing up for this, and they have about 29 members right now for the Rice Resolution. Now, in Colorado, there was another school shooting, and there was an active shooter who was roaming around. I believe I saw on the news that he is now uh, dead, and um, this, just, this is just another push to get these gun bills and the UN Arms Treaty passed. And again, I've said this in the past, we are going, I mean, think about the, um, the time space and the amount of mass shootings we have had in the last, what is it, four or five months, four months? I mean, there are just one after another because they are building and building and building. And the one that is really horrific is going to be the one where they're going to push this agenda fast forward and get the uh, UN Arms Treaty and the Dianne Feinstein bill that are pending in the Senate Past. This is what they are trying to do. And what they do is they build it up, they build it up, they mass shooting, mass shooting, mass shooting, mass shooting, big mass shooting. You see, we need to do something to confiscate all the weapons. And it will be very easy for them to confiscate. And people don't believe this because you have to remember most of the people, about 80% of them, will abide by the new law, just like is happening in New York. A letter went out, and anyone who has a weapon with more rounds that is permitted by law has to, retur and has to turn them in to the police stations. And guess what? 80% of the people will do it, 20% will not. But they will get the majority of the weapons, and this is what they're trying to do at this point. Now, we heard a lot about uh, the government wanting to collect our DNA because they want to create this huge DNA database and keep track of people. Well, they've, they're coming up with ways to do this. And one of the ways to do this, because we understand that the NSA, the DHS, uh, TSA, CIA, FBI are all spying on everyone. They are keeping social profiles and they like to get everyone's DNA on record in the database so they can track people a lot easier and it'll make it easier to identify people. They're also using uh, facial recognition to make it easier to identify people. And what we are seeing right now is the United States is seeking devices to scan the bodies of terror suspects for signs of possible work with, uh, with weapons of mass destruction. Now again, who are these terrorist suspects? Well, the potential biointelligence chips would ide ideally be able to scan people within a half an hour for a minute minute quantities of materials that could indicate whether they have handled biological or chemical arms. But again, how do they get this and how, they, how do they know who the terrorist suspects are? Well, pr it's pretty much everybody. So what they need to do um, and what they're going to say that this is mandatory now, just like it's a mandatory pat-down, because we have this new scanning, what we will need, the device should be able to examine multiple biomarkers found in a uh, physiological fluids, such as blood, saliva, sweat, feces, or urine. So as you go through the airport, they will be swabbing you, asking you to pee in a cup, they'll collect your sweat, and they'll have your DNA information. Because again, how do they know who the terrorist suspect is and how do they know which person will have this on them? Well, they don't. So we have to do it to everyone. And this is how they will be able to create their DNA database that they want to create so they can match everyone up, whoever, everyone, where everyone is with facial recognition, social profiling, and now they have DNA markers to keep track of everyone. And this is where what they're trying to do, and this is how they're trying to push this forward, because we are definitely turning into a police state. Now, we understand out in North Korea, um, Kim uh, Jong-un's uncle um, was killed, 
and um, right now the New York Times is reporting um, I believe he had him executed the New York Times is reporting that North Korea right now is undergoing a period of instability and they are playing this up big time and this goes on to say if two weeks ago we thought that North Korea was somewhat stable I think today people feel that it's not stable as we thought it was and I think if we continue to wait for him to do things he's going to continue to shoot missiles and will probably at some point decide to test a nuclear weapon uh, using his missiles and they are building this up the propaganda is moving forward because again the central bankers need to start war with a country it doesn't matter which one because they're going to involve them all to take all eyes off of the economic collapse that is coming now we understand that the United States is moving a, a lot of its fleet out to the Pacific Asian area and the Navy wants some of their battleships to run on seawater instead of um, fuel uh, petroleum fuel um, and this will make it easier because if there's a time where they cannot refuel they want ships to be self-sustaining and right now they're working and looking at this research to replace their battleships and have them run off of seawater instead of um, fossil fuel right now and we had an incident um, with a Chinese naval vessel and a US warship and a Chinese Navy vessel tried to force a US guided missile warship to stop in international waters recently causing a tense military standoff the guided missile cruiser uh, USS Cowpens uh, which recently took part in the disaster relief operations in the Philippines was confronted by a Chinese warship in the South China Sea near Beijing's new aircraft carrier I'm going to try to pronounce this Liaoning and the State Department's officials said the US government issued protest to China in both Washington and Beijing in both diplomatic and military channels the Cowpins was conducting surveillance on the landing um, at the time of this incident and again China put up the air defense zone the United States flew B-52 bombers in the air defense zone to provoke the Chinese and here we are again using some uh, provocation to get the Chinese to do something and we see you know the Chinese flexing their muscles the US flexing their muscles because eventually what is going to happen from the entire buildup um, is World War III and we understand that Russia is implementing a new radar system the United States is putting missiles in uh, on Guam and Japan has their amphibious military buildup and we have the missile shield that's being built between Poland and Romania we have the 40,000 NATO troops there and now the United States what they're looking to do is set up a new radar system guess where Alaska a they need a new powerful radar that and Congress wants this and why do they want it well they want it because they were afraid of Inter intercontinental ballistic missiles fired from China or North Korea and they want to install an X-band radar system and they need this right away they already have plans for it and they need it so they can detect these incoming missiles because they th they think we're lacking in this area and this is a great place to put it and it also will detect anything from Russia if you really think about it now yesterday I talked about Iran and we talked about um, the how the central bankers are trying to maneuver in and take over the central banks and the IMF is you know uh, coming in uh, trying to set interest rates and eventually they're going to try to maneuver their way in and put uh, the US dollar as a reserve currency and the Revolutionary Guard is saying hey wait a minute we understand and we see what's going on here and they gave a warning to Rohini and right now what we're seeing is the United States said no to um, companies and businesses especially oil companies you cannot still you cannot do business right now um, with Iran because if we allow you to do this the central bankers will lose a lot of money so right now Iran said okay we are halting the nuclear talks at this point and of course they keep the charade out there that it is for nuclear talks but we have to remember one thing if it was truly 
for nuclear talks. Why does the U.S. have no problem with Iran testing a ballistic missile that could carry a nuclear weapon? Wouldn't that come in the realm of some type of problem within the nuclear talks? But they didn't have a problem with it whatsoever. What the U.S. has a problem with is Iran doing business with other businesses and especially oil companies. It doesn't make any sense. Well, it does make sense if you look at, at it uh, from the perspective of the central bankers. Yes, the central bankers are like, well, we're not going to get a piece of the action. You're not using the U.S. dollar, and we don't have a private Western central bank in your country. So guess what? No, you can't do that at this time because we are still working out this, you know, this whole deal. But the illusion of the nuclear talks, they're okay with the ballistic missile. They're okay with uh, them having um, en enriched uranium because they understand that this has nothing to do with the nuclear, um, uh, nuclear bomb or anything like that. And this is what is happening right now. And um, again, we have to go back to what the president, the Obama administration said, and Congress. The Ob Obama said to Congress, listen, no new sanctions, because if he puts sanctions on Iran right now, I only have one course of action, and that's a military strike. So right now, Iran is backing out. Now, the U.S. could do one or two things. They can point a finger and said, listen, we were going for peace. We wanted peace. And Iran decided to back out. And this has nothing to do with the nuclear talks of why they're backing out. And see, Iran doesn't want peace. And now they're building up their nuclear arsenal. And we're very nervous about them attacking the United States. I mean, they could take that maneuver and go with you know, that, that angle. Or they can continue with the peace talks and try to work it out. But if you look at what's happening right now, um, the White House claims that they might now implement new Iran sanctions. They are, it is possible. And White House Press Secretary John J. Carney um, said that new sanctions for Iran, Iran could be possible today in the White House press briefing. Now, why would he say that all of a sudden when the... White House said no, no new sanctions, and they put the kibosh on it. And now they're saying that, you know, they might do it. And this goes on to say that this revelation was somewhat surprising considering the administration um, was very public uh, with the push against additional sanctions. So it's a very confusing message because it, what does it mean? It means that the central bankers aren't getting their way. Iran woke up, Rohini understood now what is going on and now they're backing off because they see the central bankers are trying to maneuver their way in and they are saying hold, hold it. I mean we will have to wait to see what is going on but at the same time Iran is saying you know what what we should do right now is remove the U.S. as the military presence here in the Middle East. And Iran has proposed a regional cooperation council that would focus on military and security cooperation. A former senior Iranian official told a Gulf, Gulf conference that Tehran and its new ally Iraq could help their Gulf Arab neighbors in regional security. And they're proposing a panel which could replace the U.S. military presence that protected the Gulf Cooperation Council states. And what's that? Re what you know? What they're really saying is, is that uh, we need to get rid of the U.S. and the the central bankers have the U.S. military there to protect their interest and keep the U.S. dollar as the reserve currency. And Iran is making the move to remove the U.S. from the entire region. And I've said this in my other reports that the United States is losing control in the Middle East. Egypt, Saudi Arabia um, are, are talking to other countries like Russia and uh, China, making deals, buying weapons. And uh, Turkey tried to do this, but uh, the United States came in and forced Turkey not to buy Chinese missiles and um, put a lot of pressure on them and they didn't do this and we're seeing many things happen right now 
Um, we see in Yemen, of course, the people who do not want the central bankers in their country are rising up, but there are drone attacks to keep them suppressed. And right now, there was a drone attack which attacked a wedding which had nothing to do with anything. They were having a wedding, and they're saying that there was some type of Al-Qaeda uh, person in the area, so they blew up the entire wedding and the wedding party. Um, a lot of them were killed and hurt. And we can see that this whole entire force of the United States is to keep the central banker's interest intact across the Middle East. And very slowly but sure, and also we have to remember that Yemen is a strategic location um, in the Middle East. It's a choke point right there um, for um, cargo to go back and forth and oil uh, to go back and forth in the sea. But we can see what's happening here is there are the empire is continually pushing and trying to make control, maintain control in this area, and they are losing control at this time. And this goes on to say, um, it's time we focus on rise of terrorism and extreme ideologies under the banner of Al-Qaeda in the region, including Syria, because they understand that Al-Qaeda is made up, it's CIA controlled, and they see that all of this terrorism that they see all over the place is not real terrorism. It's manufactured terrorism to keep the U.S. government there, to keep the central bankers' interests protected by the U.S. government and the Western forces. Okay. Now, there is a report that the security firm um, said advanced mobile banking and targeting attacks will accelerate over the next year. Um, it has released an annual security report warning that one major data breach will occur every month in 2014. The question is, how do they know this? Well, <laughs> we see the sophistication of threats expanding at a rapid pace, which will impact individuals, businesses, and governments. And we can see that this is um, completely being set up for what is coming. And I believe and I know that this entire nuclear deal with Iran is, I've said this many times, is a complete illusion. This will eventually break down. This will be a setup to create some type of false flag. We see the central bankers are tricky. They like to maneuver. They like to get their way. And if they don't, they like to start something. Um, and we can see how they operate. And they are doing it now. And they are in the process of creating the next event. And right now, um, there is an American EB-5 visa investor program has opened a gateway for Iranian operatives to infiltrate the country, a government memo says. So this is a government memo saying that Iranian oper operatives have infiltrated the country. Homeland Security Investigators Charles Grassley um, has said that um, a lot of Iranian operatives have abused the system and they were able to infiltrate the United States. So they're saying there are a lot of Iranians running free here in the U.S. According to the memo, one of the operatives acted as a representative for an Iranian front company allegedly run by an individual associated with an Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard. So from everything that we see, we can definitely see they are setting something up for a false flag event. I've been saying this for quite a while, and I believe with the lone wolves, with um, Al-Qaeda uh, passing through the borders in the north, and they just so happen to be bomb makers, the incident that happened in Mexico, the CNN report about Assad hiding a cache of chemical weapons, um, with the UN looking at uh, war crimes committed by Assad and bringing him up on charges, something is in the works. And now all of a sudden, the Iranian deal, the Iranians have halted because um, something has occurred, something um, developed, and now all of a sudden Washington is looking and maybe implementing new sanctions. So we can see that something is happening, something is in play. They are talking about recovery in the United States. They are letting us know. We see the stock market at all-time high. We see uh, the, the Eurozone 
at all-time highs, um, and they're pushing everything, letting everyone know that things are getting better, and we can see the pressure they put on the Ukraine, we see the pressure they're putting on Singapore, and we see the United States, Russia, China, all moving military assets all over the world and preparing with missile bases, radar systems, um, um, air defense zones, and we can see how this is all fitting into the main picture. Listen, everyone, thanks a lot for listening. Be well, be safe, and especially be prepared. Thanks a lot.